This video is brought to you by Anchor. Apple is so much better. Yo. Okay, just give me two seconds. The tracking number is 825-6343. Yeah, okay, now copy and paste that into my Mac. Six, three. Oh, by the way, did also airdrop me the picture you took yesterday? Uh, I took them with the Samsung. Hello? Hello? I absolutely love phones. I think out of all the tech we carry with us every day, phones are the most important in my opinion. As an iPhone user, I'm not really close-minded when it comes to trying other phones. In fact, the S23 Ultra recently came out and I decided to buy it unbox it and compare it to my iPhone 14 Pro so I can decide whether or not it's time for me to change teams. Although we all know iPhones are still superior. I got this little package towards the end of last week and truthfully, the only thing you get here is a super slim box with a phone, a box that very much tried to implement Apple's unboxing strip lids unsuccessfully. Eventually, I took out a knife because these don't seem to rip as well at all. Now, inside this box, you will find the back of the phone covered in this paper cover, a paper cover that allows you to simply lift the phone out of the box and no, this isn't a sticker, it's more of like a cardboard cover. At the end of the day, it reveals this beautiful green that should be paired with a clear case. And then in the front, the screen is protected with a peel of sticker. I honestly love that sound. And I also love this beautiful OLED screen a bit more than what Apple has to offer, I have to admit. Overall, that's about it in terms of the unboxing. I mean, it's dull, no set of guides, no charging cord, nor a charger, which is why I was keen on the idea regarding Anchor sponsoring this video. Now, they sent me a couple of chargers to help out with this situation. This here is the Anchor 312, delivering 25 watts for the S23, and it's super portable. However, I do like their Anchor 313 charger a bit more it's just smaller and it delivers 45 watts for the ultra in terms of charging power both are fast chargers don't get me wrong as long as you have a proper 5 amp charging cable like their bio base anchor 543 usb-c cable and the day i unboxed the ultra the very first thing i did was charge this phone a full charge from zero can take about an hour to complete you just gotta make sure fast charging is enabled within your settings anchor by the way are a company that produce insane charging technology and we've had a few of their things around the office this anchor 313 gan charger is no exception both though provides super fast charging anchors 45 watt cube is 30 percent smaller than samsung's original brick they both of course fold up they also guarantee their peak powers all safely due to their over temperature protection current regulation their 10 layers of protection and so on so if you got an s23 i recommend you get their 25 watt cube and if you got an s23 ultra i recommend you check out their 45 watt cube Cube. Both of them will be found in the description down below. Now, I'm coming from a phone that's curvier, slightly thinner in a way, and also smaller, so holding the Ultra in my hand does feel different. Good different and bad different. You see, compared to the S22 Ultra, I absolutely love that Samsung redesigned the curvature of the S23. Personally, I find it to be a very comfortable experience. It's less curvy and a bit more squared like the iPhone, but still keeps its design language in every way possible. The only thing I do hate coming from the iPhone is that, well, in landscape, it really is not comfortable. The sharp 90 degree corners on this phone are just very annoying. They did say that making the S23 box here allowed them to better optimize for the S Pen. I'm guessing it also allowed them to keep their 5000 milliamp battery in there. Now, if I was to compare this to the Pro Max, this here is lighter at 234 grams. I don't know if it's because of the camera lenses not protruding as much as the Max or just an overall design and components factor. Not that it matters because at the end of the day, I do wish iPhone had the ultrasonic fingerprint technology this has. However, I'm an Apple fanboy and I do like the iPhone's colors a bit more. Don't get me wrong, the green, the black, lavender, and cream look great, 
but there's just something about a purple iPhone that does it for me. I sort of regret not getting purple for my daily. I also did realize that this textured matte glass is fairly fingerprint resistant. It's obviously not the case with Gorilla Victus 2. They say it's supposedly more tough and I hope that's true because my S22 Ultra got a chip on the screen a few days after I got it. Yeah, Samsung. I'm honestly scared to ruin this beautiful 6.8 inch edge to edge OLED display. It definitely needs a screen protector. The iPhone 14 Pro also has an OLED display. However, I've always said it, Samsung displays look better, sharper, and a lot more colorful. I usually like the haptic feedback these deliver a lot more, but I have to say iPhone 14 Pro has more of a similar haptic touch this year now. Also similar is the peak nits that 14 Pro delivers compared to what Samsung now delivers. We're talking about 2000 nits versus 1750 nits. Yes, outside it can come in handy having that extra 200 150 nits, but I'm not too sure I might benefit from it. LTPO versus ProMotion, not quite sure if this is an OS issue, but iPhone feels a lot smoother and the change in Hertz does feel a bit more natural. It may be that some apps like Spotify, for example, are not as optimized for Android, but LTPO is just not as good. I'm not hating, uh, this is just like a fact, a fact like the fact that the Samsung speakers sound really good. I think they are better compared to the iPhone speakers and I do appreciate Samsung for letting me tweak the volume, the bass, the treble and so on. Definitely massive speaker improvements over the S22 Ultra. People online also seem to be saying that the new SoC saw a huge jump in performance. This here has the same chip that was unveiled at Qualcomm in Hawaii a few months ago. In short, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is responsible for things like the new 200 megapixel camera, LTPO, better battery life, running the phone cooler, gaming, handling storage efficiency, and so on. I ran a couple of benchmarks and it is in fact more powerful than the S22 Ultra, but not more powerful than the iPhone. Do I care? Not really. I guarantee that 90% of people won't even realize the difference in performance. Most of the time, especially nowadays, phones can feel slow because of optimization issues, poor written code within an app, and whatnot. Like, are you really going to benefit from the fact that this phone is 50% faster in some games compared to last gens? What I did realize of the bad is how insanely fast this memory is. This is the fastest flash memory in the world. Reads and write speeds are almost two times faster. So of course, this makes me want to try this out over the iPhone, especially since I'm always downloading footage from my NAS. If you've seen my most recent day in the life video, you guys know what type of files I'm always downloading. And you guys also know how much I hate my iPhone's battery. Apple Silicon is supposedly to be unbeatable in terms of power efficiency. And it's why I'm starting to think I have a faulty unit because it truly barely makes it throughout the day. While this truly bothers me day to day, it really is one of the reasons I am willing to give Samsung a try. I mean, yes, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has better battery life and I can just get that, but charging the S23 from empty with a 45 watt cube only takes about an hour or so. It's much faster compared to the iPhones, which is why I'm very much debating changing to the S23 Ultra and give this 5,000 milliamp battery a chance. A few days ago, I actually left this running a YouTube podcast in the background for an hour or so, and I can definitely tell you that battery life seems to be a lot more promising than what I originally anticipated. In one hour and 30 minutes, my phone went from like 60% to around 52%, which was already insanely better compared to my phone. And previously, that very same day, I went on a little hunt for pictures and the phone's battery life barely dropped. Like, it's already way better than what my iPhone 14 Pro has to offer. So in this department, nothing is stopping me from changing. But one department I'm not too keen about is the camera department. 
Don't get me wrong, their new 200 megapixel lens is surely impressive, but I love the native support of the iPhone camera within apps. Look, in terms of pictures, this is what I was able to capture up to now. One X pictures look fantastic in both phones. From the sunrise I took Monday morning to the mix of natural lighting and artificial lighting at the Lambo dealership, things look great. I will say sometimes the colors and the dynamic range of the S23 Ultra can be better, but when it comes to darker rooms, things can vary quite a bit. I just think the iPhone just genuinely delivers like a more natural picture within dark environments, which is what I want. It also seems like the S23 has a bit more trouble when it comes to handling the massive change in lighting. The iPhone's camera and Apple Silicon just do it so well. I also took some pictures at different focal ranges, a few in the EQS, which they all look about the same to me, and these were not the only ones I took. I also took some at the Lambo dealership, but what I really wanted to test was the 100X focal light, and I did. In fact, I compared it to the S22 Ultra, and the S23 really has some major improvements in my opinion. Up to this point, what I haven't told you is that the pictures taken up to now were 12 megapixel images from the S23, and that's because 200 megapixels and 50 megapixels only limits you to certain focal lengths. 200 megapixels can be fun to shoot with, I mean, makes images look a lot more detailed. I took some images a few days ago to compare with my iPhone 14 Pro, and if you zoom into the picture, you can really tell the difference in quality. They're actually so heavy in file size and information that my video editor has a hard time playing these. Look, there's so much I can do with this phone and I actually like the outcome. The only two things that really bother me is the shutter lag and native support, but I do think 4K ultra wide at 30 frames per second looks good. The same thing goes when it comes to its 12 megapixel front face camera and 8K videos with or LUT along image stabilization look stunning. Just overall being able to have so much at hand like the fact I can adjust the camera settings so quick is awesome. I'm not saying that one UI is better than iOS because it's not. What I'm saying is that both of them have their pros and cons. Like for example, I hate the fact that swipe up sometimes brings up Samsung Pay or the fact iOS doesn't have split screen. My issue though is that giving up things like universal clipboard, iMessage, airdrop, instant hotspots, a physical switch for mute, it's all hard to give up. At the same time, it would be nice to have dual Bluetooth audio, battery share, an actual system volume menu, and so on. I think iOS is better in terms of speed and optimization, but I do think One UI feels a bit more complete, especially when it comes to searching for things. Their spotlight is easier to query to the point that you can easily query setting option and it gives you much more. Video wallpapers are also not a thing within iOS, not that I need them but it would be sick to have. Plus you can easily tweak settings with one hand because of how accessible their quick settings is, which I also don't understand why iOS doesn't let you access the settings app from Control Center. Control Center just lets you tweak a few things here and there but that's about it. Google Maps is also far more superior within One UI compared to iOS but optimization sometimes can beat all of this. Apps with an iOS just operate a bit different. They are better, more user friendly. A quick example of that would be the heart feature within Spotify. On One UI, you just simply can't do that. It drives me absolutely bonkers. And the privacy within iOS is just exceptional, meaning that Apple always notifies you on what type of access you want the apps to acquire. There's just so much to say, and I'm, I'm sure that I'm missing so many features. At the end of the day, a day in the live video would probably make me realize a bunch of these things, like the fact that I'll most likely won't find myself using the S Pen. Like, come on, who uses the S Pen? Like, like really? The big question is, am I willing to switch? Hell no but I'm willing to give it a try, like I said, which is why I want to make a day in the life video. I'm super open about trying the S23 Ultra like I tried the S22 Ultra, but there's just something about Apple that makes me want to stay, especially when they suck you into their ecosystem. But because I'm still rocking a custom PC for work, I feel like the Samsung route is not that bad of an idea, more or less because I've also been suffering when it comes to battery life with my 14 Pro. A lot of things have to go wrong for an Apple fanboy to switch to Samsung. You Android users, you, you guys wouldn't understand. 
or, or would you? If you want a day in the life video, don't forget to leave a hashtag yes down below. Also leave your thoughts down below about the S23 Ultra. What do you guys think? Is the $1,199 price tag worth it? Or do you think the more superior phone, the iPhone 14 Pro is far more valuable? I'll let you guys discuss. My time here is done. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Take care.